Hey everyone, it's Marco. Check me out at Marco underscore wins, M-A-R-K-C-O underscore wins. Please follow the stream on Twitch. Thank you so much. Uh, this video is long overdue. It's my thoughts on pre-patch and how to make as much gold as possible in the coming weeks. Hopefully this is helpful, and if you're afraid like, oh, it's too late to start, it's not. Uh, an example of, oh, it's too late to start is this character. I made him in Season 4. Um, he leveled up, he was level 70, I think, week 1 of Season 4, and I was able to get a full set of Gladiator gear, 2k rating, 2200 MMR. Uh, it's definitely never too late to start playing this game. Uh, don't put off getting ready for pre-patch. Don't start playing at the start of pre-patch. Start now, a week early. And I'll help you out with what you should be doing. Okay, so I want to talk about four topics. Uh, there's a lot of things different between now and how Wrath originally launched. And I'll talk about how you can make uh, some money because of these changes. And that's a, a little bit of a different spin from everyone else. They're kind of trying to remember how things were and what they did before and how they're just going to repeat what they did before. We're going to have some of that here too, but I also want to veer off a different path and discuss what's actually going to be new and something they're not thinking of. So I'm going to talk about four topics. Knowledge, the leveling buff, longer pre-patch, and season four honor. <sighs> I need more coffee. All right, knowledge. The insane title. Here's an example. We know that we're going to get a title called insane. And so people are starting to farm for that title. Part of farming for the title is getting ogre suits. It makes it a lot easier. Well, for that, you're going to need over a thousand bolts of rune cloth and something like a thousand rugged leather. Those items are already skyrocketing in price on my server and getting completely drained from the auction house. So there's an example of something you could farm, even if you're not 70 yet, and start selling immediately. Um, we know from knowledge that the number one farming spot in Wrath of the Lich King is going to be the Scions of Storm. So you might even want to level a little bit there and pause there while you're leveling to 80. Uh, if you need to look it up, look up Scions of Storm. It's S-C-I-O-N-S, -S, Scions. Uh, they give a, a speed buff when you're leveling. Uh, they have mining nodes nearby. I don't remember if they have herb nodes because I was never an herbalist. Uh, but they die super fast. They drop air. Really, really good. And they drop uh, reputation items. Uh, they're similar to, like, Legion Hold um, for the Aldor in TBC. And I think they have fast respawns, but I don't remember exactly. It's been a long time. But that was the number one farming spot as of, like, patch 3-something, which we're going to have. Uh, the biggest choke points for the most popular Wrath of Lich King professions are looking to be mid-level old world materials, such as Mithril Ore, Solid Stone, and Thorium. If you want to farm some of these things easier, such as Thorium, you can go to Dark Whisper Gorge in Winter Spring. That's pretty good. Um, the eastern side, the mid to eastern side of Ungaro is good. You can look up general areas to park your tunes that maybe are just your dedicated miner or something. And every like 15 minutes or so, log into that tune, do a quick route, and then go back to whatever you were doing. You can do the same thing with herbalism, honestly. Uh, Dark Moon card greatness is insanely good in Wrath of Lich King at the start. It could be the biggest money maker next to glyphs, so you're going to want to have some kind of glyph kit ready to go possibly in pre-patch if it releases then or on day one of wrath of the lich king and you're going to want to start pumping out glyphs because people need them on day one the first thing they're going to do on their characters is look up what glyph they should buy and run to the auction house so you should look up on icy veins and other websites wowhead what are the recommended glyphs for the most popular specs try to focus on those you will ultimately be able to make all the glyphs and sell almost all of them. So you'll be selling glyphs so quickly. Like, think of it this way. You need, I think it's four glyphs per person at 70. It might be five, I forget. Um, but in general, multiply the number of people on your server by four. That's how many glyphs you need. And think about all those herbs and, and all the time it takes to mill them. There's going to be insane demand and not enough herbs, not enough glyphs. So this should be your focus. And then once you're done that, when you're leveling, you should focus on making Dark Moon card greatness because its value will go down over time. And I believe it's going to be worth 50 to 100,000 gold in week one. 
and slowly drop off over time until it's not worth much at all because everyone has one. Uh, now, if you're looking for more things to invest in, uh, you know, and what to farm, uh, keep in mind that a lot of the guides that you look up on, on what you should get for leveling a profession are TBC guides right now. And they're telling you to get level 350 to 375 in TBC. You don't want to do that anymore. You want to get to 350 and stop because Wrath of the Lich King will take you from 350 to 400, 4, 450. So do not trust the TBC guides. Some people are putting out TBC guides as if they're Wrath guides. And they're making a mistake. And they're telling you things like you need a thousand fell iron ore when you really only need 70 bars. So keep that in mind and be careful. Now, ore and herbs, as I've been talking about them, they're disappearing on the auction house and they're going up in price. It's very difficult to farm on some of these mega servers. So while you should farm as much as you can, it might be better just to go make gold and buy the items on the auction house outright. Keep in mind that for herbalism and for buying the herbs, they're going to be in groups and each group will give you a different pigment. So I made a spreadsheet and I, I tagged it with the current price of each herb and I just bought out the cheapest herb in each pigment category. You don't need a lot of the rare pigments. I believe they have about a 20% chance to drop. And I found that I needed between 150 to about 300 of each herb. But over time, I've collected about 5,000 herbs ready to go. It's going to take me a long time to mill them, but it's definitely going to be worth it. Now, another thing to keep in mind when you're buying these items and you're selling items, you know, like the, the rune cloth or the rugged leather, whatever you're selling on the auction house right now, be careful. People are getting smarter with how to trick add-ons. And so a lot of people use their auction house add-on as just a, a quick way to undercut other people. So they just auto post one copper less than the lowest price. So what I've seen people doing in recent weeks is they will post an item at 50% cost you'll undercut it with your add-on by one copper, they'll buy you out. And they will repost for the full price, making about a 25%, 30% profit in the process or more. So be careful of that. Don't just blindly follow your add-ons. Make sure you properly set them up. Now, another thing you want to keep track of is selling your scrolls. Pre-patch is coming up. Get rid of your scrolls. Agility, strength, everything. Everything must sell. Because scrolls are going to, I believe, share a slot in pre-patch. Pretty sure it's coming in pre-patch. So you do not want to be stuck with all these scrolls that raiders were buying previously that they no longer need. Luckily, Sunwell's still tough. People are still buying the scrolls. Get them sold this week. Next up, fishing in Zangar Marsh is a little hard. Partly because Scotty J made a video about an Alliance Grey quest reward. And so everyone is fishing the best nodes in Zagrar Marsh and ignoring all the others, which causes them not to recycle as fast. So, for now, it's a little difficult to make money off that, but that was one of my favorite ways to make gold, AFK. I think it'll come back. It might be something you can do in the pre-patch. If you're not super invested in the game in that moment, you know, you're running around cleaning the house, you come back, you do a fishing note or two, you go back to cleaning the house, that kind of thing. It's great for semi-AFK gold. You get a lot of money off of that. And the scrolls will still sell, um, probably just not for as much as people can only use one scroll at a time. But most people are going to want to get the scroll that is their primary scroll. So strength, agility, um, not intellect because people will self-buff that, uh, protection, uh, spirit, those things are good. Now let's talk about, uh, we've talked about knowledge and how we can use the knowledge of the past to influence how they've changed the game now to make money. Now let's move on to leveling buff. So the 50% leveling buff, the joyous journey, does completely change the game. There's some key points I want to point out. First of all, when you're leveling, you're going to level too fast. You're going to out-level content. You're not going to gear up as, as the way you would have in the past. So you're going to be a little undergeared as you're leveling up. You're also going to do things like outlevel your professions and we'll talk about that in a second but make sure that you don't vendor any white items when the fresh servers are released there are going to be white items that you find that are worth so much money later on but currently are worth nothing because nobody has any money so save your white items on alts i don't care if you have three alts with you know all their bank tabs filled with random stuff just save everything 
Also, do not sell your blues right away. A lot of them will be good twinking items. If, after the fresh server is done, you decide to, you know, transfers are opened up, you decide to leave, you know, those blues might be worth a lot more on another server. Excuse me. Uh, people will be leveling 50% faster, like I said, so they're going to out-level their professions. Stop leveling, level your profession. If, especially if you're on a fresh server. Get, get your cloth up for uh, first aid, make sure you keep your cooking up, get your herbs up, get your ore up. You have plenty of time to level, you're leveling super fast. Take that time to get these things done so that you have a completely finished character when you hit 70 in the pre-patch. And you're also capable of making the most money uh, from your your professions. You don't want to have to go back and redo it. Because honestly, with the 50% leveling buff, you're leveling super fast. Uh, alternatively, you could just go really hard to level and then go back and redo these things. Most people do that. I don't think it takes that long to level, say, herbalism or mining while you're leveling your character. But if you can't do this, don't feel bad. You can always go back. Just make sure you do and finish your professions. Um, you want to make sure you get every alt that you can. Now, if you're playing on the fresh servers, this doesn't really apply. But for everyone else, I guess it does kind of, but you won't have the time. For everyone else, you want to get a disenchanter, a prospector, and a scribe at a minimum. Okay, And also a miner and or an herbalist. Okay. You absolutely need to be able to diversify your portfolio so that when you farm things, you can turn them into other things that make you more money. You won't necessarily be able to always just flip on the auction house, buy something, disenchant it, make a profit, for example, or buy mats, craft something, make a profit. That doesn't always work that way, but sometimes you farm stuff, and then you're able to tweak it a little bit with your professions and make, you know, one and a half times what you would have made. Whereas it might not have made any money flipping, but now you're making a little bit more money farming. You need opportunities. You never know where the meta is going to go. You never know what opportunities are going to rise. Make sure you can take advantage of all the professions. And with the Joyous Journey buff, there's no excuse. You should have 50% more alts than you would have uh, in the original game. Now we're also going to have a longer pre-patch for my third topic. Let's talk about Death Knights in the pre-patch. So Death Knights are starting with 12 slot bags and 270 first aid, but no cooking. That does mean they need a little bit of Mage Weave, but it's not going to be more than maybe like a day one impact, so I wouldn't over farm Mage Weave. Rune Cloth is going to be pretty valuable though, and Nether Weave. If I remember correctly, when you level the Death Knight, you do get some Rune Cloth, so probably Nether Weave is the bigger one. Uh, the other thing is skill books. For example, there's skill books uh, for the Horde and fi uh, Firewing Point. You could buy those skill bo books, put them on the auction house. You know, returning players may not remember where everything is. You know, they may just feel more comfortable just buying, you know, guides and, and uh, or not buying guides, buying the books. Uh, but more importantly than, like, first aid, think about professions. Mithril Spurs. Oh, my God. Mithril Spurs are going to sell for 500 gold, which is really silly to me because don't be one of those people that buys Mithril Spurs for 500 gold. It's way smarter to take an alternative route to get your leveling done for cheaper. Now, normally, if you can buy Mithril Spurs for, like, 5 gold, then it's totally worth it to do that. But if they cost, like, 300 gold, there's so many alternative ways to level blacksmithing that you should seek. So be careful when you follow a guide, especially with, as prices spike. It's not always the best way to do it. And also, a lot of the guides tell you to take, like, green skill-ups. If you got to do, like, 20 or 30 green skill-ups and it's costing you hundreds of gold, just buy one orange skill-up worth of mats and do it that way. So be very careful, especially blacksmithing and engineering, because those are going to be big ones. Now, another thing Death Knights are going to need is plate gear. I think people are overdoing this a little. Most people are going to get their gear just from leveling. But that being said, why not have, you know, some level 65, 60 plate gear ready to hand to those little Death Knights? You know, why not? Uh, maybe level 58 plate gear will be good. Uh, but I don't remember. I think they get out of the starting zone with some decent gear. So you probably want to shoot for like 62, 63, that kind of stuff. Keep in mind they get a really good weapon at 65 from the, the Nagrin Ring of Blood. So you only want to sell two-handers really to them before 65. Uh, but that's something to keep in mind. Um, you know, maybe you can buy uh, one of those epic two-handers uh, that are lower than level 70. Uh, maybe that's worth it. I wouldn't focus too much on this, but it is a point. If you have plate gear that you find save it especially if it's of the bear 
strength and stamina for Death Knight. So if you do have some of the bear, maybe that's worth selling. Everything else, though, nah, it's probably not the best use of your time. Now, rune cloth bags are an interesting point for the Death Knights. Those rune cloth bags are actually more expensive on my server and have been for some time than Netherweave bags. Go figure. The smaller bag is more expensive than the bigger one. It's because people are just so used to buying rune cloth bags. Now, for Death Knights, that's only two more slots because they start with 12 slot bags for the rune cloth. I think most people are going to buy Netherweave, but you should have a stockpile of both. Uh, imbued Netherweave bags are good, Netherweave bags and rune cloth bags. They're going to sell out on day one. Another thing to keep in mind, you got a long pre-patch, why don't you level your weapon skills? It would suck to be, you know, level, I don't know, 73, you pick up a new weapon and, ugh, your skill level is 1, and now you got to waste 4 hours leveling your skills, or 2 hours leveling your skills. That's not really worth it. Get all of your skills to 350 that you think you're going to need. I'm actually doing that today, right before I was making this video. Now, when you're making gold in the pre-patch, keep doing your dailies. The Isle of Kuldanas dailies are great. But also keep in mind that dailies like the fishing one has a good ring that can drop. And also the nethering dailies are super good right now because nobody's doing them. And there's Ogrilla and whatnot. So fly around the world, do the rest of your dailies. Don't just do Isle of Kuldanas if you're strapped for cash. Especially if you're like a healer and not a DPS that can go farm stuff easily. Now, again, I said Glyphs are going to be the number one gold maker, and then Dark Moon cards will be next after the pre-patch. Make sure you get that, cliff, that Glyph kit set up, and you level your Glyphs so that by the time the pre-patch is over, you're maxed out with one character on Glyphs, and they are at least level 65. I would get them to 70 and have them ready to go to level either as your main or an alt right away in Wrath of the Lich King so you can get the best stuff for Glyphs. Uh, GDKPs are huge, and also your, your glyphs, you want to have like an herbalist or someone to supply herbs as you're leveling. The GDKPs are big. Big for Death Knights, big for everyone. Uh, if you're leveling and, and uh, you're hitting 70 recently, they're the best way to get gear on your character. I know that sounds crazy. I went to a Karazhan when I first hit 70. I bought items for 100 gold. You have 100 gold when you're leveling and you hit 70. You know, maybe you don't buy your Epic Mount right away. But you should get a full set of PvP gear as quickly as possible, then go into GDKPs. It wouldn't be Karazhan then because you're in Season 4 gear probably. But go into GDKPs with full Season 4 gear, at least a Season 4 weapon. And you'll do decent. You'll, you won't necessarily be a full-on carry. Uh, but you'll be able to like participate and be viewed as a valuable member. And you'll get some gear for cheap. Don't go to GDKPs where things are going for 30,000 gold. Just avoid those and you'll be fine. Also, don't be a cheapskate. If you go to GDKP and an item you need drops, bid on it. Then just don't rebid if you don't want to buy it. Uh, but don't be one of those people who skips because then you'll get kicked out. Uh, if you need help with GDKPs, I might do another video on that because there's a lot of misunderstandings about a good versus a bad GDKP and how to spot them. But moving on, you need a guild in Wrath. It's essential that you have friends to log in with and support one another in Wrath for PvE content. Because PvE content is going to be a joke to get. So if you're not getting it, you're extremely missing out. And this is the whole point of the game. Make friends. It's an MMO. Speaking of which, get those friends together for when Wrath launches. During the pre-patch, gather up your friends. See who's actually going to play. And get a five-man squad together in case on day one you can't level because there's too many people or the servers are bad. And you have to go into dungeons together. So get that five-man squad established. Now... You may be thinking like, oh, Marco, there's all these complicated ways to make gold. I've got a really simple one. Super simple. This is e Anyone can do this. Go into Trade Chat and advertise to buy Netherweave cloth for less than 15 silver a piece. Maybe shoot for 12 silver or 10 silver a piece. Buy them in bulk. Then when you're going to bed, turn them into bandages. You wake up in the morning, you sell them all. You just made a profit because they're worth 15 silver a piece when you sell them as a heavy Netherweave bandages. So, things like that, really simple ways to make gold. It's okay, by the way, to sell your herbs in pre-patch, going back to the glyphs again. Just pay attention to the meta for glyphs. Don't sell too many. You're going to need a lot of herbs. Now we'll talk about some farming spots. You know, you might want to hit with your Death Knight or any of your characters while you're not doing any of the other stuff I've talked about. These are all farming spots that are still very good in the game. Legion Hold for a melee character or a hunter is still best for farming, in my opinion. 
it has the best loot I think you can get at the fastest speed, considering how good our gear is now. You're two-shotting the mobs, sometimes even one-shotting them. It's beautiful. They instantly respawn. Be nice to the other farmers if you're on Grobulus. If you see me there, give me a wave instead of a, you know, a backstab, please. Speaking of good farming spots, Southern Skeddies is a really good skinning spot. There's an uh, equivalent spot with slightly lower level mobs. Um, it's in Netherstorm in the northeast corner by the dungeons, so that's pretty good. Water respawns in Shadowmoon Valley are hyper spawns, so you can fly around killing them and they all come back. That's in the northern section of Shadowmoon Valley. The Elemental Plateau, believe it or not, the fires are still really good. The airs are okay. The waters are eh. Uh, but you can fish them up, so that's pretty nice, too. And not a lot of people farm there anymore, so it's really good. Uh, mana mobs in Netherstorm are still decent. It's west of Kirinvar Village, but they are nothing like what they were at the start of Sunwell. Excuse me again. PvE content, believe it or not, is another good way to make gold. Even five mans, because you clear so quickly, you disenchant, you know, a couple blues and greens, and... All of a sudden, you've come out with a decent amount of money, especially if you do the five-man dailies. Elemental Earths, I believe they're going to sell out during the pre-patch for engineering re-rolls. You don't need a lot of Earth to level engineering, but if a lot of people are leveling engineering, maybe it'll sell out. So maybe that's something you should save up for pre-patch this week and then sell off. You know, save up 100 of them or something. Maybe they double in value. You know, don't, don't do 10,000 of them, obviously. And last but not least, I think I might have already said it, but level your weapon skills if you haven't. Yeah, I think I did say that. My bad. The final thing I want to talk about is Season 4 for Honor. This actually has a bigger impact than you think on the game. A lot of people are going to be getting super fast upgrades, and they're going to want to upgrade that gear. So make sure you have enchanting mats, gems, etc. And keep in mind, you can now create vellums. If they have full-fledged inscription, you can put enchants on vellums. So that'll be a big way to sell them. No more begging for, you know, um, tips, right? Now as an enchanter, you can just put the tip right on there on the auction house. It'll be really healthy for enchanters to make more money. Keep in mind, with the Season 4 for Honor, people are going to want to run Warsun Gulch so they can do the four different token turn-in, you know, the four Great Honor, whatever it's called. And when they're running Warsun Gulch, they're going to want speed potions and free action potions. So those will be in high demand. And the herbs, which are used for them, which are, I think, uh, Strangle Kelp and Swift Thistle, they are going to skyrocket in price because people are already buying them for inscription. So they, they will be extremely high demand. That might be something to sell, too, if you don't want to make the potions or can't because you don't have an alchemist. And finally, my last tip for you, if you're one of the people who needs to buy stuff with Season 4 Honor, most people do. 99% of the player base is not arena capped and out of things to buy the night before the patch maybe around 6 p.m pacific because you know all these patches always release late you don't want to have these things decay go do a bunch of bgs so that you have as many bg badges in the mailbox as possible if you're not at 100 of each badge right now you should probably be doing that so you're ready to go uh it's not the most important thing in the world as you will get more honor for doing bgs in the pre-patch maybe about a thousand to three thousand per bg but that being said why not stockpile if you're out of things to do and definitely the night before get a bunch of badges so that you can do easy turn-ins all right guys again my name's marco i don't always do a lot of gold stuff but i felt the need to do this and i definitely need followers on twitch i'm brand new we're almost four months in i think and we could really use the viewership so thank you again please follow me on twitch M-A-R-K-C-O underscore wins, Marco wins. And I look forward to playing with you in pre-patch. Good luck and have fun.